In my last video, I talked about the speed differences of different card readers in the SD card department. Today, I also talk about speed differences. However, it's all about these cables as well as chargers with USB Type-C. Because USB Type-C, all the things, is great as long as you know what you're working with. Overall, USB Type-C is awesome. It's amazing to have just one connection type for all the things, and now more and more devices are changing and switching to that type of connection. You have microphones that you can charge with USB Type-C, you have computers that you can charge with USB Type-C, even phones, and you can also do data transfer for like little devices like this. These types of hard drives are super, super fast, and these types of cables are super versatile, and these types of chargers can be used for all kinds of things. However, there are also issues with that. And I was curious to figure out what is going on with the different types of cables and different types of speed with different topics, because there are actually two areas that we need to talk about. One is charging and the other is data transfer. And these cables can do both in theory. However, what I found is that some of these cables actually do one thing way better than the other. So let's talk about the difference first in data transfer. When you hold these two sets of three cables each in your hands, you might not really find any noticeable difference. However, they are vastly different in the data transfer speed that they provide. These cables right here are much better for charging, and these cables here are much better for data transfer. But let's talk about the details. Basically, I used this SSD drive as well as the NAR box, and I connected this with different types of cables to my computer and tested any cable with any device. So I have results for this read as well as write speeds there and this SSD drive right here. I tested the speed with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test Tool, which gave me the results that I'm about to present here. First off, we have the results of the T3 SSD drive. And I'm aware that this drive is not actually the newest on the market anymore, so there are faster drives than this. However, the point that I'm trying to make is probably still going to be pretty visible for you. So first up for the tiny SSD drive right here, this tiny cable also is actually the fastest with 370 megabytes per second in write speed and 375 megabytes per second in read speed. Then we have the Narbox cable right here, which has 210 megabytes in write speed and then 365 in read speed. And lastly, I have the cable that I got with the Canon EOS R, and this one got at 190 megabytes per second in write speed and 375 in read speed. So for a data transfer from your camera to your computer, the read speed is pretty much the same for all of these. However, the write speed is significantly different between this one as well as this one, where the Canon one has 190 megabytes per second and this short one here has 370 megabytes per second. And this makes me actually very happy because this is also the cord that I usually use with this tiny device when I Velcro it to the back of my computer like so. The same test, of course, also was done with these different cables here. We have the Zendur cable, we have an official Apple cable, and we have one from Anchor, which is pretty long. Now, here, the transfer rates are pretty much the same for all of these. They are 34 megabytes per second write speed and 37 megabytes per second in read speed. So you can transfer data. It's just about 10 times as slow as it would be with a proper cable that actually is for data transfer. Testing the same thing with the one terabyte NAR box that I have right here, I actually got slightly different results. And they are also kind of funny. The NAR box cable, of course, has the fastest speed with 290 megabytes per second and 295 megabytes per second in read speed. Then we have the short cable with 280 versus 300, so it reads a little faster, but it writes a little slower. And lastly, we have the Canon cable, which is at 280 write speed and 300 read speed. So interestingly enough, the short one and the Canon one read a slightly bit faster from the Narbox. However, the Narbox cable has overall the better speed for both of them. Again, with the charging cables, you have similar results. The red one here has 30 megabytes per second write and 37 in read speed. And these two here have 35 megabytes in write and 40 in read speed. So those are the basics about data transfer with the cables that I have right here. 
Since starting to research this topic, I actually also found a cable that supposedly does both of those things at the same time. I have not tested this, however, they claim 100 watt charging as well as 40 gigabit data transfer. And that would be quite remarkable. However, the cable also costs about $30, and we'll link that in the description below. Again, I haven't tested that specific cable, but it would be an amazing one because it could do both of those things without having to keep track which one is used for what. But now let's have a look at the charging capabilities of all of these cables with different types of chargers. So now talking about the chargers that I have available to myself. I have the Anchor charger right here, which is a USB-C type charger, and it has also a couple of USB-A ports, so it's a great hub for charging multiple devices. Then I have the Narbox charger, which has a USB-C port, as well as the USB-A port right here, which is also quite handy. And we have the huge Apple brick that I also used for this test. One more thing that I did for this test was I also have my LG monitor right here, which is an ultra wide monitor. And it also has a USB-C connection to do the display as well as provide power to whatever device is connected to that. And that is also included in the test results. Now, how did I test this? I basically just plugged my computer in with all of those different chargers and looked at what type of charging they were providing. I used the iStat menu bar item for that to see what type of power I would be getting and it actually shows the charging wattage. So that's how I determine which cable gives me what kind of watt power. First up, we have the LG display with the LG display cable. And this actually provided me with 57 watt of power and the display works. This is actually not that great of a power source specifically for a MacBook Pro 15 inch, which usually comes with this power brick, which is rated to 87 watts. And charging a computer with a lower wattage than what it is intended to be charged with could potentially damage or at least reduce the lifespan of the battery. So this is something that I have done a lot in the past and I still do sometimes that I just plug in this one cord into my computer and I'm probably going to be fine, but I usually like to also additionally hook up my computer with a secondary USB-C cord, which is just for charging. Now you can actually do that and your computer does not blow up, which I thought in the beginning, which is like I had to research whether or not I can actually plug in two chargers at the same time, but apparently the computer is smart enough to just choose one of the two and it chooses whichever one is stronger. So that's a great thing to know as well. Second, with the LG monitor, I also tested the other charging cables and they all gave me 57 watts of power. However, only the LG cable actually also worked as a display cable. So only that cable provided the hookup to also be a display port cable, which these charging cables did not provide. Next up, we have this Anchor USB multi-hub, which provides a USB-C port. And there I tested actually pretty much all the cables. The Narbox cable that I have right here provided me with 60 watts. The short cable right here with 60. The Canon cable here with 30 watts. The red cable that I have here with 30 watts as well. And then we have the Sendur cable with 30 watts and the Apple cable with 60 watts. This is actually kind of interesting because there are completely different results for the different chargers. So continuing on the list, we have the Apple charger with the Narbox cable on that one, I actually got 60 watts. Then we have the short cable, which gave me 60 watts as well. Then we have the Canon cable, 60 watts. The red anchor cable here, also 60 watts. Then we have the Zendur cable, which provided me with 86 watts, as well as the Apple cable, which provided me with 86 watts as well. So this is actually interesting because the Zendur cable on the Anchor multi-port only provided with 30 watts. Don't know why that is, but it is the result that I got. So with the Apple charger, the Apple cable, as well as the Zendur cable actually provided the best throughput. Now I also have the Zendur Super port here, which has two USB-A ports as well as two USB-C ports. These USB-C ports are rated to 100 watts and 18 watts. Both are for power delivery. However, there's actually a little bit of a weird thing going on. If I plug in the Zendur cable into the 100 watt port and then hook that up to my computer, it starts charging with 100 watts. However, as soon as I plug anything into the other port, which is a USB-C port with 18 watt power delivery, 
then the 100 watt port immediately goes down to 60 watts even if there's nothing other than a cable connected. So it's not even charging anything but the internals immediately switch the one port which should be 100 watts down to 60 watts. So that's actually a little bit of a bummer about this device. You can't use the two USB-C ports at the same time if you want to charge, for example, a powerful MacBook Pro. But going through the different results with the Sendur and the charging at the 100 watt port, the Narbox cable gave us 60 watts, the short cable gave us 60 watts, then the Canon cable gave us 60 watts, the Red Anchor cable gave us 60 watts, the Sendur cable gave us 100 watts, and the Apple cable gave us 100 watts as well. And now I did one more test here with this Hu2 multi-port, which also has power delivery throughput. So you only need to connect this to one outlet of your computer and you can charge as well as use the other ports at the same time. And in the setup of Apple cable, Sendur charger 100 watt port, going into the power delivery port of this Hu2 multi-hub, I actually got 95 watts of charging into the computer. And last but not least, I did a short test with the 30 watt charger from Narbox, which is supposed to be used with the Narbox to charge this device. There I tested with two different cables and they both gave me 30 watts. Obviously this is a 30 watt charger, so it's going to give you 30 watts. So overall, looking at the different chargers and different cables, it makes a lot of sense to make this test to know what you're using in what situation. Especially if you're using powerful devices like a MacBook Pro and you want to charge it with the most efficiency, then it makes sense to use high quality charging cables like the Apple cable or the one from Sendur that I have tested here. Now, of course, you can also use any other cable from any other manufacturer as long as they provide you 100 watt power and this makes only sense if you also have devices that can charge at that speed and also you have devices and chargers that can actually output that speed. So if you have a smaller MacBook, for example, or just a phone, you might not even need a Sendur 100 watt charger to even be able to use that because it wouldn't make any sense to charge your device with that. However, if you want the fastest charging out of your device, for my testing, the Zendur 100 watt super port and the Zendur cable or the Apple power delivery 100 watt cable, those are really good choices for that. Most other cables are fine if you don't want the 100 watt charging. So we found that most other cables actually provided 60 watts or 30 watts, somewhere in between that range. So that's what we found with this whole setup. But now data throughput, there I feel like it's even more important to look for compatibility as well as the faster speeds because waiting for your drives to transfer those 100 gigabytes isn't really that much fun if you have just a power delivery cord. And it was kind of obvious to me that the Zendur cable here, which is made for charging, is also one of the slowest cables in the other tests. And looking at the other cables, you can use those for pretty much anything. We found that the Canon cable here, for example, works pretty well as a charging cable at 60 watts, and it's also pretty fast in data delivery. The Narbox cable that I have here, also pretty fast in data delivery, and gave us around 60 watts in all the charging tests. So these are kind of universal if you want to use up to 60 watts. And also they work for the faster data throughput, which may arguably be the more important one. For myself, I now know what my cables can do and which cable I am going to use for what. I'm basically only using the Apple one and the Zendur cables for charging USB-C type devices as big as a computer. If it's a smaller device like a microphone, for example, the Rode VideoMic NTG or the Wireless Go or something like that, I'm probably going to use any cable that uh, is lying around because it's enough. But for a computer, the Zendur or the Apple cord. For data delivery, I'm really happy that this short one is actually optimized for that and I have three of these and I can use those with tiny drives like this so that I can just plug them into my computer and the other cords are also good for that use case. But for the most part, this short one is actually what I use most in this regard. Again, in the research of this, I found another cable that I'm going to link in the description which actually provides both at the same time. And that's a super expensive cable, but it is also a multi-purpose cable, so you can use both at the same time. 
Now, I hope for you this was good information. If you want to test these things for yourself, and I definitely recommend you do, I would recommend using the Blackmagic Speed Test tool, which I will link in the description below. And I will also link the Coconut Battery Tool, which is a free tool for macOS with which you also can see the data delivery that you're getting from your charger. So that you can make sure that you actually get as much charging power as you would expect from whatever charger you are using. Overall, again, for me, this was enlightening to know the different cables and the different speeds, and now I know which cable to use in which circumstance, and I hope you will do too. Now, if this video was helpful for you, please make sure to give this video a like so that other people can find this information as well, share it with a friend that might need it, and leave any questions and suggestions in the comment section down below. I will try to answer those there or make a video specifically about that. If you want to see more videos like this and about other topics, please make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao!